This case takes place in Luton, England, on the 26th of February, 2022. Rolex watches are some of the most iconic in the world, and most people can instantly recognize the logo. For those who don't know, Rolexes are incredibly hard to buy. They are in such demand that you can't just walk in and buy one. You have to be placed on a waiting list, and even then, the shop assistants may not even sell you one. It massively depends on if you turned up to the store looking presentable, if the shop assistant likes you, or if you have the spending power to buy less desirable watches from other brands in order to be placed on the list to even buy the Rolex you want. The lack of availability of these watches and how hard they are to buy means that the prices in the secondary market have skyrocketed, costing thousands more than the retail price. People are willing to pay a premium to get the watch right away, but this causes a big issue. Watches are incredibly easy to steal and can cost in the hundreds of thousands. Because of this, watch crime has gone up exponentially. There are gangs in London who will kill and have killed for these timepieces, operating primarily on mopeds, threatening people with machetes to hand over their watches or die. If the wrong kind of person sees your Rolex watch, it can cost you your life. And this is exactly what happened to Saul Murray. Saul was a 33-year-old father of six who lived in Luton, England. In February of 2022, he had moved into a new home after being released from prison. He was found guilty of a firearm charge and for assault. Despite a past of criminality, Saul was working to better himself. His father helped him find accommodation and he began working as a plasterer. He seemed to be doing well. Saul liked expensive designer and luxury items and would often post images of his Rolex watches, one of them being a Rolex Daytona, which is one of the rarest models. It was on the 9th of February that this image caught the attention of a 35-year-old woman by the name of Supreet Dillon. Supreet was a mother and had been arrested and charged with a number of offences too, mainly for fraud. The two began talking and they planned to meet, but Supreet had sinister intentions. She was planning a honey trap, meaning she intended to rob Saul by seducing him first. She wanted his Rolex watches. It was on the 26th of February 2020 that the meeting would occur. Sir Preet arrived at his home with another woman, 21-year-old Temedeo Awi. The two women can be seen on CCTV arriving at the property, with Saul meeting them and allowing them inside. They all walk in and made their way into Saul's room. Once inside, they began drinking. They shared a brandy and engaged in intimate activities. But whilst Saul wasn't looking, Sir Preet put the dead drug GHB inside Saul's drink. Saul then consumed the beverage laced with a sedative, totally unaware. After Saul fell asleep, Sir Preet made her way to the front door of the property. She then got a broom and placed it in the front door to leave it ajar, allowing people to gain access to the property. However, not long after this, Temedeo can be seen on CCTV exiting the home and flashing her mobile phone. It appears as if she is signalling someone to her location. Two men wearing large coats to conceal their identity can be seen entering the frame and joining Temedeo. She then walks with them and enters the property again. The men are very careful as to not leave any fingerprints behind. Just minutes later, Temedeo and Sir Preet can be seen leaving, quickly followed by the two men. One of them is holding a knife. All four of them flee from the scene, and just moments later, Saul can be seen naked running towards the front door. But before he can even get outside, he loses consciousness and collapses. His body would soon be discovered by those living in the building, and they realized that he was no longer breathing. The emergency services were called, but there was nothing they could do. Saul had already passed away. There was a visible mark to his leg and blood was literally all over the property. He was totally naked and had died from blood loss. A post-mortem found that he died from a deep wound to his thigh. His femoral artery had been penetrated and he bled out. The search to find those responsible soon began. The data from Saul's mobile phone was recovered and they were able to see that he had been talking to Sapreet for a number of days. They were able to identify her with her phone records and through the CCTV due to it being high quality. They also found that she had an extensive criminal record. 
The police acted quickly. They found out where she lived and arrested her. Supreet initially denied anything. She acted like she had no idea who Saul was and refused to answer any questions or tell the police who the other people were, replying with only no comment. This, however, wouldn't matter as the police began some rather impressive detective work. Investigators theorized a number of motives. One theory was that this was some kind of honey trap robbery gone wrong. Officers began looking into Saul's background to see if any of his previous convictions had anything to do with his murder, and they found that he too had been involved in honey traps before. He had instructed a woman to seduce a man, and this woman then took a man to a hotel and signaled for Saul to come. Saul then entered, tied the man up, and robbed him. They speculated if this could have been a retaliation, but then they found that Saul had posted on his social media showing off two Rolex watches, and saw that Sir Preet had messaged him shortly after the images were posted. Sir Preet's phone was also accessed to find other potential suspects. Timideo Orwi was seen to have been in contact with Sir Preet around the time the murder had taken place. Unlike Sir Preet, Timideo had no prior convictions and was a university student in her final year. She seemed to be an intelligent young woman with aspirations, leaving the police baffled as to why she would involve herself with these people. Temadeo was located, arrested, and brought in for questioning. Upon her arrest, she too pleaded ignorance. She claimed to have no idea what was going on, and claimed that she had nothing to do with what she was being arrested for. However, she was identified through the CCTV footage. Also, the coat she was wearing in the footage was found in her home. When Temadeo was confronted with this evidence, she soon changed her tune and refused to speak, replying with no comment. It soon became clear that both Supreet and Temadeo had been involved in a number of other honey trap robberies, targeting criminals and married people so they wouldn't contact the police after the robbery. After some searching, other victims were found. Meanwhile, the police needed to find the other two male suspects that were likely the ones who had killed Saul, but the two women refused to speak. Investigators began reviewing all of the CCTV footage that they could find from around the area that Saul lived. One street away from where Saul was living, investigators found footage of a car pulling up. It matched up to the time when the attack occurred. The car was identified as a hire vehicle and the name of the person who had hired it was Cleon Brown. Cleon had a history of committing violent crimes with knives. Cleon was arrested and brought in for questioning. The hire car he was using was also searched, and the data from this car showed his whereabouts and the routes the car had taken. Officers then traced the location data of the mobile phone that belonged to Cleon and the hire car, and the phone data matched up perfectly with the route of the car. More CCTV was then found. After the murder, Cleon went to a petrol station and cleaned the car in the early hours of the morning. The CCTV was incredibly clear. Investigators were able to positively identify him. In this footage, they also saw that he had removed his shoes when at the petrol station. This was because his shoes were heavily bloodstained. Investigators became confident that he was indeed at the scene of the crime. But he too only replied with no comment and refused to name the fourth and final suspect. Investigators searched through Cleon's mobile phone and they found that he had been in contact with someone who had used a prepaid burner mobile phone, meaning that the phone wasn't registered to anybody. Investigators then looked to see who else this prepaid burner phone had contacted. They found that this burner phone had connections to a woman they looked into who this woman was and found that she had a relationship with a friend of Cleon Brown, a man named Ikum Afia. Ikum had a long list of extremely violent offences. Investigators then looked at the route the car had taken, and they found that the car had stopped on the street where Ikum lived. Satisfied that this was enough evidence to suspect Ikum, he too was arrested and brought in for questioning. Meanwhile, the other three were charged with the death of Saul. Of course, Ikim wouldn't speak either. Investigators then sought the help of a CCTV expert. They found CCTV footage of Ikim before the murder. They noticed that he was wearing a rather distinctive coat, a £1,300 Moncler jacket. 
Investigators contacted Moncler and confirmed that it was indeed the coat they suspected it was, and only 69 had ever been sold in the United Kingdom. That very rare jacket was confirmed to be the one that the person was wearing in the footage in Saul's accommodation. This was eventually enough to charge Ickham with the crime. Eventually, Supreet came clean and stated that the two men in the CCTV were indeed Ickham and Cleon. With the overwhelming evidence against him, Ikim admitted that he was the one who had stabbed Saul. He told investigators that he would be willing to plead guilty to manslaughter, but they were convinced that he was guilty of murder, and so they pursued this instead. The trial soon began, and it became clear that the plan was for the two women to slip a pill into Saul's drink, whilst the other two robbed him of his Rolex watches. The judge overseeing the case said, Something went wrong with the primary plan. What exactly went wrong is beyond the court's capacity to be sure of within the available evidence. Supreet also gave evidence during the trial. She admitted to targeting six other men in similar so-called honey trap robberies between October of 2021 and February of 2022, and that Tamadeo had been involved in four of them. Surpreet very much tried to play the victim, telling the court that she only committed these crimes so she can feed her children. However, evidence was presented to the contrary. She had a wardrobe full of expensive clothing, and she would frequently spend money on luxurious items. It was clear that she committed these crimes to fuel a certain lifestyle, and not for any other reason. Ikem told the court that he had entered the flat after the two women had trouble getting the watch off Saul's wrist. Whilst Sol was unconscious from the sedative, Ikem tried to get the watch off his wrist, but Sol woke up and began attacking him. Ikem claimed that in defence he stabbed Sol in the leg and that he never intended to actually kill him. This explanation from Ikem did seem to be somewhat accurate, as according to the evidence recovered from the crime scene, it did appear that a struggle had taken place. Cleon, Surpreet and Tamadeo were all found guilty of manslaughter. Cleon was sentenced to 11 years, Surpreet was sentenced to 10 years, and Tamadeo was sentenced to 7 years. Ikem was found guilty of murder and was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 25 years. What is tragic about this case is that Saul was trying to make positive steps to turn his life around. He also leaves behind six children. He was killed over something as trivial as a couple of Rolex watches, and these watches actually turned out to be fake. In a victim personal statement, Saul Murray's father Colin said, The CCTV footage is the last thing I think about before I go to sleep, and the first thing I think about when I wake up.